Hello everyone. Right now, the compilation rally crashes in fair. Guess how many dollars we will lose in this video? Let's get it on. There is a hump day, a Robert said, that even though he'd driven this track like 1,000 times and knows it very well, there was just a small mistake. Eau Rouge is one of the few corners still left in modern racing that drivers need to respect. You need skills to attack this corner at speeds. All four drivers were immediately assisted by the circuit's emergency staff, and all drivers were fine afterwards. A crash at Rally Condros for Kruna. 54 Dolphin, the crew pets with their Renault Clio R3. There was an easy getting over these humps, but he is okay because he has protective gear. At least he had a nice jump and got out of the turn safely. Ignoring that slide, Paul Gauthier's efforts and less two were clearly visible as he attempted to get back on track. Never skimp on money for protective gear and safety equipment in races. You can save your life in moments of danger. At the C. Christi K, Rondo crashed after landing on SS2. It was a challenging road with many rocks and uneven terrain. Not too many riders can pass that corner easily. It can be considered a safe drift because there were no injuries. Look at those times. Specialized products cannot get through this thick layer of snow. It was just a test, not a drift. And that is the type of Hyundai Motorsport turbocharged engine with direct injection displacement, 1600 cc bolt, and a stroke of 83 on 73.8. It seemed like the racer was so focused on the surrounding audience that he forgot he had reached a fork and needed to turn. Confusion may have caused him to lose control of the steering wheel. The co-driver luckily survived this crash. There was a road race cage, not a rally cage, and there wasn't adequate protection or box on that side. It seemed like he steered too early when preparing to enter that bit. Luckily, the safety equipment is at a premium level. For Racers often have trouble with corners, and you can see this corner is not easy. Luckily, it still applied the brakes in time before going down that hill.
a big scare for crew number 63 on aqua planning in the SS4 at a place called Lapture. Fortunately, there were no injuries, even for the commissioners. This was the collapse of the light crew, Dubian, in SS1 number 75. It is as if the steering wheel or wheels are locked up as he approached the turn. The BWW encountered problems on the ice cover track. It turns out that racers cannot avoid slipping on the tarmac. Curves and tarmac are always a concern for all drivers. Professional racers are sometimes no exception. Luna ST Rally 2019 big moment on SS6 BMW NR33. Even though the drift failed, the audience still applauded the racer for his ability to fix it. Awesome rally crowd. It was surprising that the racer could go out in a completely normal state after those flips. Proves he had a good protective suit. I guess it is some kind of error in the area setup. Too much downforce in the back or something, or just not tapping the foot brake right on the kicker. Oh! Rally Estonia 2019 NR17 Big Mistake. Any driver will sometimes fail on their journey. It is just that the racers have a better way of correcting their mistakes. At least he had successfully navigated through many bends before that. Perhaps it was just his way of creating emphasis in his race. Those impact sounds are absolutely brutal. The Lamborghini Huracan GT3 crashed in 24 hours in 2021. The great thing is that all drivers are okay. That was a big mistake to place a log there against cutting the curve. Fortunately, they are okay and they're not injured at all. David Henderson crashes the East Riding Stage rally in 2024. It is the result of a combination when the driver steers too early and brakes suddenly. FWD cars provides disappointment in the corners with massive understeer. All drivers are okay. That leap excited the audience but also brought risks. Luckily, he was racing a driver so the repairing bell wasn't too difficult. Should the racetrack choose clear roads on both sides of the road? Although the racer lost control when he crashed into the dirt, but he landed unscathed. tell the corners that this the strength of the excellent steering wheel. It can be seen that racers need to turn the steering wheel quickly and firmly to be able to overcome curves. 
The roadside dash or the failed drift of the car always surprises the viewer. Along with that, there was also a moment when the car was drifting and it crashed into the ditch and damaged the rear of the car. The crane when carrying a load of 16 tons broke and hit a nearby building after catching fire. The cause may be due to the electrical system on the crane being damaged or causing a fire, mainly due to the equipment working in an overheated environment, combined with a hot and humid environment leading to a short circuit in the electrical system. Do you have an estimate of the damage when the giant crane broke down and the building were damaged by fire? Definitely a huge number. A large 3,000 horsepower BLW locomotive manufactured by Varanasi fell hard to the ground when lifted by a crane. It is known that the locomotive is being exported to Mozambique in Africa. A ferry serving the Verstu Kuvastu road between the mainland and the island of Moho collided with Kuvastu Harbor. Collided with Kuvastu Harbor. The speed at the time of impact was 4 knots, and both RAF and ferry were damaged, including vehicles standing in front of the RAF. The cause of the collision may have been that the ferry had technical problems. What a heavy loss in value. While we could dent the engine or scratch the paint if we parked haphazardly, mooring such a large vessel haphazardly could result in a much more significant damage. And once the momentum of these 8,000 ton ships is boosted, you cannot apply the brakes, so it crashed into Hapak L. Lloyd's Tolton after it hit the 3,350 ton Hamburg Bay at the South Harbor agent. An offshore supply vessel experienced mechanical problems during departure maneuvers, causing it to back up against a luxury sailing yacht moored at the marina. The captain tried to remove the engine and release both of the ship's anchors, but it was not enough to overcome the inertia of the 1200 DWT ship. An excavator climbs from the shore onto a boat in the river, demonstrating skillful excavator driving skills. It seems that the driver miscalculated when driving the excavator onto the boat. As a result, both the boat and the excavator were buried in the river bed. Fortunately, the excavator driver was able to get out of the cap in time. Before the collision, the white car was initially stopped because he hit the parked Corvette. Looks like a drunk guy and that's why you shouldn't drive drunk. You will no longer have control of the wheel, hopefully he will have a memorable lesson. If the battery is not flooded and the charging starting point is not underwater, the battery will start immediately and operate. It would be a pity if it broke down because it's a BMW owned by a Russian influencer. An 80,000-ton cargo ship crashed into a Taiwanese port while preparing to dock, causing the crane to topple. Overhead cranes tragically crashed into a stack of shipping containers, causing extensive material damage. It is difficult to stop a large ship immediately. It depends on the captain's anchor time. 
The crane fell to the ground in the Dublin area. Even a dull rod didn't have enough force to keep the crane balanced. Perhaps the object lifted exceeded the allowable weight. If the object is to be lifted at a bulky or a heavy level, they would use a larger crane, of course. A private EMB-202, referred to as BT Uzi, crashes into Tocton's Brazil. The pilot survived. Basically, the aircraft was on a flight to apply businesses in the area of Lagoa da Confusoa, which was cancelled due to bad weather after discharging water. It began to climb when both wings broke. Low-altitude turns are often necessary for forced landings. There is naturally a heightened degree of risk associated with maneuvering at a low altitude. But I think every single engine pilot ought to be proficient at it to be properly prepared for the possibility of a forced landing. After passing a porch at a high speed, the driver of the Audi Q7 lost control and crashed into 11 cars some of which were very luxurious, causing damage estimated at 500,000 pounds. On February 1, 2022, a Garrett-type aircraft overshot the runway when landing at Remy de Haen Airport. The approach speed was about 90 knots, leading to the pilot losing control. The plane was partially destroyed, which may require hundreds of thousands of dollars to repair. When driving a forklift, the fork should be at the required height enough to clear the terrain and not too high that it can hit someone or something. The surface the forklift operates on should be measured. A couple of other things he did wrong. He wasn't wearing the required seatbelt. Second, he didn't have a spotter for clearance issues. Third, his load was not centered on the forks. It all adds up to an expensive incident possibly worth half a year's salary. The 26,000 ton ferry Austin Spirit set sail with a prolonged whistle as it threaded the needle between the two hulls at Turkey's Aliaga ship breaking yard. The ship The ship crashed into the beach at a full speed, creating space between the two ships, pushing them aside and finally stopping. This type of beach collisions is a common practice to initiate dismantling at all ship breaking yards around the world. A Turkish bulk carrier with a tonnage of 57,000 tons leaving Singapore was suddenly turned across its path by a smaller ship. The collision was inevitable because the giant tanker could not stop or change course. Singapore Coast Guard was called in to rescue the smaller ship's crew members. Oh. On October 2, 2021, a Boeing Steerman PT-17 crashed on the road after taking off, but hit a power line, then a traffic light before crashing onto the road. It could be due to an engine error or running out of fuel that prevents the plane from flying high. The cost to repair an airplane is certainly no less than six figures. The Elysian I-176 cargo plane crashed at Gao International Airport, GAQ at high speed while skidding over the runway in Mali on September 23, 2023. The Elyushin 76 is a multi-role fixed-wing, four-engine turbojet strategic transport aircraft, often used to transport heavy machinery with poor service, so the cause could be an engine problem or running out of fuel.
It seems like the Lamborghini supercar simply entered the curve at too much speed, which makes us wonder if the driver is to blame. Not too damaged, completely restorable. The 750 horsepower of Indidor SV isn't exactly impressive as a road machine. Good oversteer attempt, the driver pushed the car too far, but the real problem didn't occur until he tried to overcorrect the skid and ended up in the curve. With the BMW M2, the speed at which the accident occurred was moderate, so perhaps the damage caused by the car was not too serious. A group of careless demolition workers are knocking down a water tower on their own truck. Cracks began to echo and the tower suddenly tilted towards the group of people standing. The men could not do anything but watch helplessly as their car was crushed into a pile of rubble. A strange incident involving an SUV and a speed boat. The operation to unload the boat into the reservoir ended in a complete failure. The vehicle driver as if predicting the incident, couldn't save the SUV and at the last moment abandoned the vehicle, crashed into the boat and quickly sank. A Mexican Air Force Skorsky UH-60 Black Hawk received damages to its main water blades after they hit the water while doing maneuvers at low altitudes over the sea. Probably damaged the whole power train and the transmission also. Expensive carelessness. The pilot needs corrective training after that. that the M4 was simply going too fast into the corner. The sand on the side of the road likely causing the car to lose traction. The Bavarian team's machine went too wide and crashed into the grass. The BMW M4 had a real off-road experience as we could see the machine barreling up rough grass on the side of the road. Who's responsible for this collision? Many people believe that the driver on the Lamborghini Aventador SV Roadster was responsible for accelerating before braking, which may have sent the wrong message to the Ford Fiesta. The first Del Caribbean collided with several trucks and a perimeter fence as it docked. The incident not only caused panic among people in the area, but also people around the port. The incident may have been due to water flow or related to port structures and goods preparing for export. The driver of the Ford momentarily lost control and fortunately didn't hit anything else. That's why we shouldn't stop a car on the road, even close to the curb, because someone can hit you at any time. Honestly, it wasn't a bad driver. It was just the bumps have been there before and cars tended to break traction due to the hops. Just take it slow with supercars that are having powerful engines. The Pontiac tried to play it off by continuing to do donuts after he smashed into that porch. These car meets only bring them expensive repair and compensation bills. It seems that there were confusion between the accelerator and the brake pedals. But his face tells that he got money to fix the porch. So, I don't think it's a big deal for him.
It was surprising to see the Lamborghini Huracan LP610 4 car worth more than 200,000 euros with lights still on and no sign of the driver after crashing into the transformer plant, the cell maritime of the capital Wilva. The driver may have lost control due to driving at high speed. Both people in the car were later arrested and charged with reckless driving and faced huge debt to the Lamborghini owner because they only borrowed the car. A little tip for anyone using metal ramps like this. Spray them down with a coat of truck bed liner and make sure they are completely dry. You get great grip and you will not go sideways like this on average inclines. Damage estimates were at least $12,000 for the Mustang 1965. Collision between two ships, Wick Van Rysdale and Paula, while crossing the river in the Netherlands. Wick Van Rysdale passed Zizi Kimpy right on the starboard side and steered hard forward, hitting Paula head on and steering to Hard Harbor. The ship's bow was severely damaged. Repair bills could reach tens of thousands of dollars at this point. The boat took on a lot more water than I would expect in that launch. Is that normal? Was that boat expecting to take on water like that? It looks like such frequent launching puts the boat at risk of capsizing. Oh my god, look at that. This is an example of a really sloppy warm-up. The 45-foot boat was hanging sideways in its slings and was also slammed against the edge of the raft when it finally sank into the water. A helicopter preparing to take off was seriously damaged when a truck passed too close and collided with its blades. This is an area with a police fence, so there is a sign. Perhaps the truck driver ignored that sign. Don't be reckless near a helicopter. Wait patiently until it takes off. It is heartbreaking to think about the bill for preparing the rotors of the helicopter and the truck. Do not drive too fast, you will easily lose control of the steering wheel. With a car with a powerful engine like a Lamborghini, especially on slippery roads with too many curves, money can buy supercars, but not driving skills. Why would you accelerate on this small road? If he has the money to buy an Aventador, he should invest in a driving course for a supercar with a powerful engine. Above all, learn to take responsibility for the problems he cause. A good driver can accept missing the exit, but a bad driver cannot. Even if it means taking the risk, he should at least slow down and look before merging into the main lane. Hello, welcome to Swag Fail Supercar Fails channel. 
Swike Fails Supercar Fails is a channel that brings you traffic failure situations on the road, racetrack, and anywhere. If you're a big fan of Supercar Fails, crash car compilation, and incredible traffic situation caught on dashcam, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. Wish you have relaxing moments on the channel Swike Fails Supercar Fails. Goodbye and see you in our latest video. I can hear the demons call when they do what they do And now I feel like taking off, find a place with a view The pain is never gonna stop if it's controlling you I know the time can heal it all, I just gotta get through I just gotta get through, I just gotta get through Cause I feel like taking off, find a place with a view The pain is never gonna stop if it's controlling you I know the time can heal it all, I just gotta get through Sometimes I feel like all is lost, but I know it's not true I wanna put up all my my walls cause I'm not in the mood But then I cut myself off from the rest of the room I know that I can heal it all if you're patient and soon It can all be worth it, all the searching Pain is never really permanent, but damn it hurts, man I could feel all of the turbulence and it's concerning